Today's headlines. President Duterte graces the Bangsamoro rally in Maguindanao, where thousands show support for the Bangsamoro Basic Law. A survey shows 82% of millennials nationwide support President Duterte. Authorities destroy millions of pesos worth of cigarettes with counterfeit tax stamps. And South Africa's Demi Lee Nell Peters wins the Miss Universe 2017 pageant. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Thousands of Muslims from across Mindanao flocked to Sultan Kudarat Maguindanao to attend the Bangsamoro Assembly. President Rodrigo Duterte is among the guests of the assembly organized by the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Gadzali Jafar, vice chair for political affairs, said the assembly will update the Moro people about the status of the draft Bangsamoro Basic Law. The bill that is pending in Congress enables the creation of a new entity that will replace the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. This is the result of the two peace accords between the government and the MILF that will end the conflict in southern Philippines. ARMM officials have vowed all-out support to President Duterte's peace program to solve the decades-old Moro issue. Governor Mujib Hataman reaffirmed his earlier commitment for a smooth transition of the ARMM government to the new political entity. Meanwhile, Globe Telecom temporarily cut off its mobile signal as a security measure in compliance with an order from the National Telecommunications Commission. Globe said mobile signals would be lost in Maguindanao, Cotabato, and Davao del Sur from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. or until further notice. Three U.S. Navy sailors went missing after their plane crashed into the Philippine Sea. The U.S. Navy identified the three sailors as Lieutenant Stephen Combs, aviation boatswain's mate Airman Matthew Chieslastri, and aviation ordnance man Airman Apprentice Brian Grosso. They were part of 11 crew and passengers aboard a C-2A Greyhound transport plane that crashed into the ocean 500 nautical miles southeast of Okinawa on Wednesday afternoon. The rest of the passengers were found safe. The Navy ended the search and rescue operations on Thursday. The cause of the crash is under investigation. The C-2A that crashed belongs to a Japan-based squadron that flies cargo and passengers between shore bases and the USS Ronald Reagan. The U.S. Navy expressed sorrow over the loss of the three sailors. A nationwide survey showed young Filipinos support President Rodrigo Duterte and his war on drugs amid concern about extrajudicial killings and the violation of human rights. In the survey conducted by Publicus Asia, 82% of millennials nationwide approve of Duterte as a president in general. 72% also support the president's anti-drug campaign. The survey noted that 18% of the respondents believed the issue of extrajudicial killings was serious, with 36% saying the same about human rights violations. It, however, noted that 30% saw a decrease in corruption under Duterte. Over 60% of the respondents also saw Duterte as natural and honest, despite his crude language. A nationalist and patriot and a public official with a no-frills lifestyle. Public as Asia said, millennials are socially active, which is how they make their interest in social issues known. Personnel from the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency underwent a workshop on financial investigation to strengthen its capability to uncover drug-related money trails. The workshop was also attended by members of the Anti-Money Laundering Council. PIDEA Director General Aaron Aquino stressed the need to uncover assets of drug lords and prevent them from using their money and influence to evade punishment. He said PIDEA needs to improve its intelligence operations, investigation procedures, and collaboration with all types of financial institutions and AMLAC. 
The Padilla chief added that Padilla's Financial Investigation Unit must understand the financial systems of the government and take a closer look in the circles of compliance in various agencies. He said this will help them identify and follow drug money, secure documents and evidence, and make a strong case to freeze drug money. The Eastern Mindanao Command raised its security posture to prevent possible atrocities of the new People's Army following the termination of peace talks. President Rodrigo Duterte signed Proclamation 360, canceling peace talks with the Communist rebels. The Communist Party of the Philippines is set to order more violent attacks and atrocities in response. East Mintcom Commander Lt. Gen. Benjamin Madrigal Jr. said all units will remain vigilant to prevent the NPA from terrorizing communities, economic establishments, military posts, and personnel. He also asked for support from the public and all stakeholders to report the presence of armed groups in their respective areas. He assured that peace efforts will continue in collaboration with local government units and agencies. Still to come, authorities destroy millions of pesos worth of cigarettes with counterfeit tax stamps. The ARMM government is set to begin the repair of schools damaged by the conflict in Marawi City. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Government officials led the destruction of the first batch of cigarettes seized for having counterfeit tax stamps. The nearly 5 million packs of cigarettes worth about 142 million pesos were seized in Mindanao by the Bureaus of Internal Revenue and Customs last March from Mighty Corporation. Wholesome Philippines used the so-called co-processing method, which ensures the total destruction of waste materials and reduction of pollution. The products were part of the evidence in one of the three complaints filed by the BIR last May against Mighty Corporation for the use of fake tax stamps. The BIR and BOC have stepped up their joint operations of illicit cigarettes and other products in line with President Duterte's all-out drive against smuggling and tax evasion. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III expressed that they will intensify efforts to stop tax evasion. The government is also set to destroy other batches of mighty cigarettes confiscated in Pampanga, Bulacan, Tacloban, and Cebu. The Department of Education in the Autonomous Region is set to begin the repair of schools, particularly those affected by the conflict in Marawi. Here is our report. The Department of Education in the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao will start the repair of seven damaged schools in Marawi City and 54 others in various parts of Lanao del Sur. Alfadal Pajiji, Dep Ed ARMM Assistant Secretary, said the budget for the repair worth 34 million pesos will come from the regular program of Dep Ed. The City Schools Division of Marawi said seven schools have been cleared and are now ready for enrollees. 
The DepEd ARMM has drafted recovery programs and conducted initial damage assessments for the schools adversely affected by the Marawi crisis. It also provided e-learning assistance, psychosocial first aid, and a feeding program for affected school children. ARMM Governor Mujib Hataman said their focus is to make sure that learning spaces are safe as the students return to their respective schools. The DepEd Central Office earlier announced that about 2 billion pesos is needed to rebuild Marawi schools that were totally damaged, plus 47 others that need major repair. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. The Land Transportation Office in Mindanao reported the restoration of its operations in Marawi City as part of its latest accomplishments this year. The Marawi City District Office under LTO Region 12 was the first agency that restored its operation in Marawi. The regional office recorded over 10,000 traffic and administrative violations from January to October 2017. Meanwhile, LTO Region 9 in Zamboanga collected a total revenue of 509 million pesos as of October this year. The biggest earnings came from collections of the motor vehicle's user's tax worth 315 million pesos. This is close to its year-to-date collection in December 2016. LTO Region 10 in Cagayan de Oro City also reported over 10,000 traffic and administrative violations from January to October. LTO Region 11 in Davao City reported nearly 48,000 traffic violations plus about 6,000 cases of violation of Seatbelt Act. Other activities of the LTO Regional Offices are Participation in Oplan Lambat Bitag Sasakyan Oplan Biyahing Ayos Undas Oplan Kaluluwa and Oplan Ligtas Biyahe Christmas. The cancellation of the peace talks between the national government and communist rebels will not affect the local peace talks with communist rebels in Davao City. The localized peace talks with New People's Army rebels operating in the hinterlands of the city are being undertaken by the Davao City Peace Committee headed by retired Judge Ridgeway Tanjili. Mayor Inday Sara Duterte Carpio said the work of the peace body is based on the general welfare clause under the local government code. She said that the localized peace talks do not contradict with the position of the national government. She added that the peace talks will only be cancelled once Malacanang officially declares the NPA as a terrorist organization. Police arrested an alleged member of a terrorist cell operating in Sarangani province. Police Senior Superintendent Joseph Similiano, Sarangani Police Director, identified the suspect as Akbar Magid Buyuk alias Abu Saipen, who was arrested inside his residence in Sitio Dampilan, Barangay Lumatil in Maasim. Operatives recovered at the suspect's house a PRB-423 fragmentation grenade. Buyok was tagged as directly involved in several bomb attacks in the area staged by terror group Ansar al Khilafa Philippines or AKP. Buyok was a close ally of alleged AKP founder Mohammad Jafar Sabewang Magid alias Tokboy, who was killed in an encounter with police operatives in Kiamba, Sarangani in January. AKP, which has pledged support to the terror group ISIS, has been blamed over a string of attacks in Sarangani and neighboring areas these past years. Police are now investigating reports that remnants of the AKP are regrouping. Up next, South Africa's Demi Lee Nell Peters wins the Miss Universe 2017 pageant. Women leaders assemble in Davao City to empower others to become advocates of peace. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. ang Duterte on duty. Ulat sa ginagawa ng presidente. November 15, Miyerkules. 
malugod na tinanggap sa Manacanyang ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte, si Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. Nagsagawa ang dalawang pinuno ng expanded bilateral meeting at pinag-usapan ng patuloy na gumagandang ugnayan ng Pilipinas sa China. Sinaksihan din ni na Pangulong Duterte at Premier Li ang pagpirma sa labing apat na kasunduan sa pagitan ng Pilipinas at China na ginanap sa Malacanang. At sa kainilunsad ng dalawang pinuno ang Binondo Intramuros at Australia Pantalyon Bridges Project na makatutulong sa kalakalan sa Metro Manila. Inilunsad din ang Dangerous Drugs Abuse Treatment Rehabilitation Center Project na itatayo naman sa Mindanao. November 18, Sabado, binalo ng Pangulo ang mga sundalong nakipagbakbakan sa Marawi at nakaenkwentro ng NPA sa Tagum City. Dumalo si Pangulong Duterte sa launching ng Tienda Farmers and Fisher Folks Outlets sa Davao. Layunin ng proyekto na suportahan ng agricultural producers at gawing abot kaya ang kanilang mga produkto para sa lahat ng Pilipino. November 21, Martes. Ginawara ni Pangulong Duterte ang 26 na sundalo ng Order of Lapu-Lapu Kamagi Medal at binigyan din sila ng financial assistance. Ilan sa kanila ay mga sundalong nakipagbakbakan sa Marawi. Pinangunahan ng Pangulo ang huling tikas pahinga, isang pagpupugay sa mga bayani ng Marawi. Ang naturang event ay paggunita at pagpaparangal sa mga nasawing sundalo at pulis sa Marawi. Dumalo si Pangulong Duterte sa 65th General Assembly of the League of the Cities of the Philippines kung saan pinresenta ang 2017 Special Report ng LCP na naglalaman ng accomplishments at initiatives ng organisasyon. November 22, Miyerkules. Nagpasalamat ang Pangulo sa mga sundalo sa Fort Magsaysay sa Nueva Ecija at sinabing puro papuri ang kanyang natanggap mula sa iba't ibang world leaders dahil sa pagtatapos ng rebelyon sa Marawi. Marami akong natanggap na accolades but it was not for me. But rather coming from the military attaches uh, of the countries uh, participating and the heads of state and everybody else na nandoon and they were congratulating me for the Marawi uh, campaign which to them was successful. Everybody whom I met during the SEAN walang sinabi kung hindi napakahusay ng sundalo mo. Ito ang Duterte on duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. Miss South Africa, Demi Lee Nell Peters, bested 91 other candidates in Las Vegas to be crowned Miss Universe 2017. Here is our report. South Africa won its second Miss Universe title after 39 years with the crowning of Demi Lee Nell Peters in Las Vegas, Nevada on Monday morning, Manila time. The 22-year-old business management graduate beat out 91 other aspirants. Colombia's Laura Gonzalez placed first runner-up and Jamaica's Davina Bennett was second runner-up. The Philippines' own Miss Universe 2015 Pia Wurzbach was among this year's judges. In the Q&A portion, Nell Peters cited equal work for equal pay as the most important issue for women in the workplace. She is also an advocate of self-defense for women. The Philippines' Rachel Peters managed to reach the top 10 before bowing out. Despite her loss, Senator Grace Poe praised Peters, saying the Filipino people remains proud of her. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cabe. Filipino boxer Glenn The Rock Porras stopped former world title contender Noldi Manakane of Indonesia to claim the vacant WBC Asia Boxing Council Super Bantamweight title on Saturday at the UM Gym in Tagum City. Porras pummeled Manakane to submission, winning via knockout in 2 minutes and 36 seconds of the first round. He improved his record with 31 wins and 19 knockout against 6 losses, while Manakane suffered his 23rd defeat and 11th knockout loss against 32 wins and 2 draws. 
Foras is a former interim WBO Asia Pacific Youth and Philippine Bantamweight Champion and now also currently the Mindanao Professional Boxing Association Super Bantamweight Champion. World Youth Martial Arts Bronze Medalist Felix Dave Cantores led the gold medalist in the 2017 Muay Thai National Championships held this month at the Phil Sports Multipurpose Arena in Pasig City. Cantores of Baguio City won the boys 16 to 17 63.5 kilograms event in the advanced category. Among the gold winners in the advanced category were national team members Joji Pajaron, Lance Valenzuela, and Albert Matayo. Pajaron was declared champion in the senior men's 48 kilograms event. Valenzuela ruled the senior men's 51 kilograms event while Matayam won the gold in the senior men's 60 kilograms event. Baguio City's Raniel Mabiasan, Judith Chadiaas, Rosemary Recto, and Ligaya Kagaid likewise delivered gold medals. Ateneo subdued LaSalle in Game 1 of the Best of 3 UAAP Men's Basketball Title Finals at the Mall of Asia Arena in Pasay City on Saturday night. Ateneo took the lead early even as LaSalle cut down its lead up to the fourth period. The final score was 76-70. to 70. 30 Ravenna led the Eagles with 12 points, followed by twins Matt and Mike Nieto who scored 11 each. Matt Nieto showed that he can still be a key player despite being wounded in the eye halfway, while Mike contributed crucial baskets in the fourth quarter. Aljun Melesho finished with 24 markers for the Archers, but Richie Rivero could only back him up with 10 points, followed by Ben Embala with 8. Women leaders convened in Davao City to highlight the need to empower women as a force of change that can participate in promoting peace. Here is our report. Women leaders from all over the country joined the launching of the National Women's Peace Table at the Marco Polo Hotel on November 23. The event aims to give women a venue to enable women to participate in peace building. Government Peace Panel Chair and Convener Irene Santiago said the women's peace tables all over the Philippines will give women a significant voice in pursuing and promoting peace in the country. She particularly cited the need to provide a platform for women to participate in peace-building efforts with communist and moral rebels in Mindanao. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio underscored the role of women in achieving a just and lasting peace. She said she is banking on the stronger voice of women and involvement to break down barriers and foster positive relations. She pointed out that women are capable of rectifying conflicts, despite being depicted as a victim of abuse and discrimination. The mayor also lauded women leaders for their efforts to restore dialogue, trust and peace, starting in their own communities. The National Women Peace Table is an initiative of the Kahayag Foundation and the Mothers for Peace. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's headlines. President Duterte graces the Bangsamoro Rally in Maguindanao, where thousands show support for the Bangsamoro Basic Law. A survey shows 82% of millennials nationwide support President Duterte. Authorities destroy millions of pesos worth of cigarettes with counterfeit tax stamps. And South Africa's Demi Lee Nell Peters wins the Miss Universe 2017 pageant. The holidays are coming soon. It's 28 days before Christmas. For more stories, please log on to www.pna.gov.ph or visit the PNA page on Facebook and Twitter. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.